Hello, I'm Shireen Smith to discuss branding basics today. What we can learn from Oscar Wilde's The Importance of Being Earnest. Now, the literature classics have become classics because although they were written many years ago, they impart a timeless wisdom that remains relevant even in today's society. So there are lessons that we can take away from them. Let's look at Wilde's The Importance of Being Earnest for some branding lessons today. Now, Wilde has this to say about first impressions. Something tells me that we're going to be great friends. I like you already more than I can say. My first impressions of people are never wrong. First impressions still carry a lot of weight in our modern society. For example, when we first meet someone, that person's handshake, their demeanour, their clothes, the way they speak, all create an initial opinion about them. It can be very difficult to change these first impressions too. Similarly, our initial impressions are often the reason we form a certain impression about a business. One reason for being mindful of the brand you create in the first place is because you want to make sure the business attracts your ideal customers and also that their first impressions create a sense of trust that you can then build and maintain. Now, in the book, The Culling of Brands, Adams analyzes why people join cults and identifies a similarity to why they follow brands. There are ways in which we all tend to feel different, even alienated from the world around us. This makes us search for a more compatible environment. When we find an environment where our difference is seen as a virtue, then we're likely to feel a sense of security and safety in belonging there. People who become part of the tribe of fans and followers find themselves within a group of like-minded people so they can be who they truly are and be celebrated for being themselves. A brand that attains cult status has a protective shield to stave off adversity which could seriously damage a lesser brand. For example, a few years ago, news about Apple treating its workers in China inhumanely had surprisingly little effect on its customer base. Now, had this news been our first experience of the company, we would probably have written the company off from the very start. You see, the importance of the first impression has in fact only increased with the internet. Nowadays, there's so much noise that, you know, people's attention spans have decreased to the point where a few seconds is probably all you get to persuade someone to use your product or service. Now, your name, logo, website, design, content, first telephone interaction, these are all examples of what can go towards creating that all-important first impression, influencing the opinion that a potential customer forms about you. The first impression includes the designs, but designs isn't the only factor by any means. You see, you need to get the marketing insights clear in your mind and the values that you want to impart so that you can then ensure the designs follow through. 
For example, when I rebranded the visual identity for Asrides, I spent quite a long time working out my values, what my point of difference was and so on. Only when I was clear on all this did I invite a designer to translate these values and messages into a visual identity that would be in keeping with my aspirations. For example, we're all about online intellectual property issues. So I wanted to communicate that message, which is why we ended up with a logo design that people associate with technology. The logo draws inspiration from IBM. So it would have been a waste of time simply to ask a designer to produce a visual identity had I not first been clear what brand elements would be right for the business. You see, the name is also one of the most important decisions you make. Often the very first encounter a potential customer has with your business is with your company's name. This is where a brand both begins and ends. Oscar Wilde has this to say, my ideal has always been to love someone by the name of Ernest. There's something in that name that inspires absolute confidence. Now, Wilde does use the theme of the name Ernest to mock the superficial way in which people in Victorian society uh, formed their decision whether to marry someone. But we can still learn a lot from Gwendolyn and Cecily's desire to place so much faith in a name. A name does indeed carry certain connotations and is far from being just a random you know, arrangement of letters. Names have meanings and evoke reactions and responses. Your name is arguably the most important choice you make for your business and brand. You know, if you need to get help from someone who understands trademarks and marketing intimately, it represents your business's image and reflects what your business will be like. Do you want your company to convey a sense of fun and innovation? Or do you want to create a more traditional impression? You know, FC UK might be a good name for the clothing line aimed at a younger crowd, but would you really ever consider calling an insurance company something like this? No, of course not. You see, a lot of the big well-known companies have put much thought into their names. Google based its name on a mathematical term, whilst Amazon chose its name due to the association with South American rivers, whose size they wanted to mimic in their desire to ultimately be the largest online shop in the world. They started off with books, although Jeff Bezos always intended to be the everything store. Get the name right and you could put yourself on the road to building a standout brand. Get it wrong and you might unwittingly be losing customers. To find out how to protect names, um, I've got a blog post, Is Trademarks Necessary for Your Business? which you can go and have a look at. What makes brand names particularly tricky is that quite apart from fulfilling this marketing function, the name has to be legally available and legally effective. It must also be suitable for your business plans. You know, if you're intending to license the brand and extend it into other categories and offer merchandise, the name has to be distinctive enough to be available to register as a trademark in all the various categories and geographic markets in which the brand will be sold. This points to a made-up name like Zumba. 
This is just one reason why the person you work with on naming must be someone who understands trademarks extremely well. You just can't choose a name and then think about trademarks later. The two are intertwined. They're part and parcel of one another. Being authentic. Nowadays, there is so much awareness about the importance of being authentic. Authenticity is one of the most important aspects of building a standout brand. Even if a company makes an excellent first impression and has a perfect name, if it's inauthentic in its actions, then positive first impressions will quickly go sour and the perfect name will suddenly be filled with bad connotations. I hope you have not been leading a double life, pretending to be wicked and being really good all the time. That would be hypocrisy, said Wilde. Now, to make sure a brand builds a loyal fan base and is consistent and authentic in its actions is important. If a business promotes itself as ethical, for example, and then is discovered to be testing its products on animals, this is bound to lose some followers. Something similar actually happened to the body shop after it was bought by L'Oreal a few years ago. A brand is about delivering on a specific promise. It's something a business is known for. As the above quote from Wilde says, hypocrisy, hypocrisy uh, pretending to be one thing when in reality you're something else is a no-no. Therefore, if your company makes a promise and promotes itself as being one way, make sure all the company's actions, whether online or offline, are consistent. That means if your company prides itself on quality, you need to make sure everything down to the paper you send letters on reflects quality. So in conclusion, a surprising amount can be learned from Wilde's uh, comedy. These branding lessons um, should be remembered that the first encounter matters. Never dismiss the importance of a name. And if you want help uh, to set up your new brand or want to refresh your existing brand, do visit my personal website to find out about the various ways I can help you. Mm -hmm.